guys, I hope your week is going well. As you can tell from the title and thumbnail of today's video, I'm going to review Kylie Skin skincare. I've been getting so many requests if I could please review the ingredients of the products in Kylie Skin. And I honestly wasn't going to do this video, but because you guys seem so excited about the brand and the products, um, I figured I would go ahead and film it. But I personally have not used any of these products. I'm merely going through the ingredients and telling you what I think of the products just based on the ingredients from my perspective as a dermatologist. Um, personally, I you know have no interest in using the products, um, but uh, I can speak to the ingredients. In looking at the products as a whole, there are seven products, and in my opinion, the skincare line is incomplete because there is no sunscreen. Sunscreen is the most important part of any skincare routine. Uh, you know, arguably, it is it is the most important part. Protecting your skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation, not only for protecting your skin against photo aging, but also against the formation of skin cancers in your older years of life. And so there's no sunscreen, but in their defense, sunscreen, at least in the United States, has to go through, you know, worldwide, not just in the United States, but has to go through testing. And so, you know, there are a few more loopholes that they might have to go through and criteria that have to be met. So maybe that's in the pipeline, um, who knows? Um, but they don't have a sunscreen. And outside of sunscreen, my other kind of philosophy around skincare is keeping it minimal. Fewer products generally better. And keeping it minimal, keeping it down to the essentials. The reason for this is the more things you put on your skin and expose your skin to, whether it be toners and essences and all of these exotic cosmeceuticals, the more likely your skin immune system is to rebel and say, get this stuff off. Uh, either in the form of allergic contact dermatitis or irritant dermatitis. So keep it simple, keep it minimal. And the tenets of a, of a skincare routine should focus just on three, three products. Sunscreen, a basic cleanser to remove dirt, oil, sebum from the end of the day, and a basic moisturizer for keeping the skin hydrated and allowing for a good skin barrier restoration and preventing transepidermal water loss that leads to dryness and irritation. Kylie Skin has two of those essentials. They have a cleanser and a moisturizer. So I'll go over those first. The cleanser is their foaming face wash, which is a $24 face wash for five ounces. And there's nothing about this that I can really say that stands out to me as unique or setting it apart from any other cleanser that you might find in the drugstore, Ulta, Sephora. There's no ingredient that is novel. There's really nothing unique about this. It's a basic, so it's a basic gentle cleanser with cocomidal propyl betaine, which is a surfactant. Um, and so there's really nothing I can say about it. However, it does have fragrance. And fragrance is something that I always encourage you all to avoid in your skincare products because fragrance uh, in skincare is responsible for an epidemic of fragrance allergy, not only in the US, but worldwide. And people always say to me, well, I don't have any problem with fragrance. I've been using fragrance for years. It doesn't give me any problem. I have no irritation to it. I kind of like it. And I've got to tell you guys, as a dermatologist, that, you know, is not, I don't want you to be falsely reassured. Just because you don't have a problem with fragrance today does not mean that you can't develop a sensitivity to it and an irritation to it. And that's actually true of any ingredient, but fragrance doesn't have a role in skincare. It's not helping anything in, in your skincare products. It's not, it doesn't have a purpose other than to create a luxury experience to make you want to buy the product. So it's not helping you, it's helping the bottom line of the manufacturer. So I say skip it. Only, only, problem, only problems can arise from using fragrance in skincare products. Also, the other issue with fragrance is it can lead to vasodilation in the skin, which can lead to chronic irritation, uh, which may be subtle and you may not even be appreciating, but over time that can, that can be cumulative and just you know, create problems for you. And then the other reason to avoid fragrance is that it um, can act as a co-sensitizer, meaning that it can make other ingredients in your pro products 
more problematic than they would be to you if they were just there by themselves without fragrance going along for the ride. It's kind of like the devil on, on, their on the shoulder of other ingredients and that it's egging things on to a bad outcome. So I strongly encourage you guys to avoid fragrance and that, you know, I'll say that here and now at the beginning. That being said, fragrance is less risky in wash off forms like cleansers and shampoos. Uh, so you definitely want to do diligence to avoid it and leave on products like moisturizers or sunscreen. But from time to time, you'll even see me trying out a cleanser with fragrance in it and you know, it's unlikely to be problematic for you. However, if you do have fragrance allergy already, then you've got to avoid it in all forms. But if it's there in a face wash, you know, it's a little easier to overlook. So that's that. But you guys, it's not cheap. It's 24 bucks for five ounces. Vanny Cream makes a fantastic gentle cleanser, no fragrance, no common allergens, no parabens if you're sensi sensitive to those. Uh, it's $8.99 for eight ounces. Likewise, for you guys in Australia, QV makes a fantastic cleanser. Um, you know, I can list some down below, more affordable than this. And I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, there's nothing about this that is unique or novel, so. Uh, her face moisturizer is 24 bucks for, I believe, an ounce. Kind of pricey. This is sounds like a good moisturizer on for, first impression. It's got shea butter in it. I have a video talking about shea butter as a moisturizing ingredient. Wonderful for uh, helping to seal in transepidermal water loss. The product also has oat extract in it. I've got another video talking about all the merits of oats and skincare products and the use of oats and colloidal oatmeal as uh, skin barrier restoring, moisturizing, and all of the benefits. So check that out. However, this product is a little misleading. It says fragrance free, but it's not fragrance free. It has orange peel in it. Orange peel is rich in D-limonene. D-limonene is a compound that is probably most pervasive in fragrance, probably one of the most common compounds in fragrance mixes and in proprietary fragrances. And it's derived naturally from orange peel oil. So this is not truly fragrance free. I'm pointing that out to you guys because the term fragrance free can be very misleading to consumers. It is not a regulated statement in any way. And so it can kind of be false assurance when you read that. And in other words, you have to do diligence as a consumer to flip the bottle over and really read the ingredients and make sure that there is no fragrance. Fragrance can go by a lot of different names. I will list some of the most common ones down below for you guys, but this does in fact have fragrance in it and it is that orange peel oil. And like I said, 24 bucks, kind of pricey. I would recommend Vanny Cream, CeraVe, you know, uh, La Roche-Posay, Double Repair, Tolarian. I've got tons of videos on facial moisturizers. I'll list some down below for you guys that are less, less likely to cause problems. But the, bot the bottle is cute. Uh, so, you know, it, there are far worse moisturizers out there, far more expensive and offensive out there than, than Kylie. So um, there's that. All right, so those are the two essentials. And then we get into the into the useless stuff. Walnut face scrub. Uh, walk away. I alluded to this in my video on the doll in the Dollar Tree about the walnut scrub. Um, this is a product that retails for twenty two dollars for three ounces. This is a, not a unique product whatsoever. Saint Ives apricot scrub, exact same thing. This is the exact same thing as the Saint Ives apricot scrub. Uh, de designed and marketed as a mechanical exfoliant. Uh, to appeal to the consumer's desire and compulsion to scrub the skin and to over exfoliate. People have this idea that they need to really aggressively be exfoliating their skin and they're really overemphasizing it. And when you do that, you set the stage for skin barrier impairment, transepidermal water loss, irritation, the immune system rebelling and causing problems. And at, at the most, mechanical exfoliation can be achieved very, very gently and modestly and effectively simply using a washcloth and gently rubbing the area once or twice, and that's it. But walnut shell particles are in a lot of these scrubs, including this one, and they are probably the one of the worst mechanical exfoliants because it's impossible to, um, to make the walnut shell pieces smooth. So they're kind of like shards of glass almost 
incredibly abrasive, incredibly irritating the skin barrier. More so than, you know, the, the beads, the micro beads, the polyethylene micro beads get a lot of negative attention. But those are actually, they're not great, but they're actually better than walnut shell because they're at least uniform in their exterior and smooth. So they're less abrasive than walnut. But walnut's all natural, so it appeals to the desire to use all natural skincare products. And all that is natural is not safe nor effective, and that includes walnut. So I don't recommend that. It does say on here, uh, ripped testing. Uh, repeated insult patch testing. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It does not sound like fun. Patch testing is something that we do in dermatology uh, to detect the presence of delayed type hypersensitivity to ingredients, aka contact dermatitis. Um, but it's not really a standardized way to detect irritant dermatitis. And it's typically read a few days outwards to a week after application of the ingredient onto the skin in a standardized way. However, irritation from skincare products can be cumulative over time. So, you know, this is not this is not giving you an outward look as to as to the irritation of the product. So I, I wouldn't rely on that statement. And it's kind of, you know, one of those things like dermatologists test it. It doesn't mean anything. It's a marketing claim. It's not regulated. And like I said in my other videos, you know, it's not like dermatologists are hanging around testing these things out. And where they substantiate, how they substantiate that claim is really loosey-goosey. And to be honest with you, no clue. And they probably, you know, they probably have a friend who's a dermatologist who is like, you know, whatever. And, you know, they say dermatologists tested, but... Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not any kind of authoritative statement. Then the vanilla milk toner. Toner is another product that people really have a strong desire to use. Historically, toners had very high amounts of alcohol, alcohol denaturant in them, which is not a demon ingredient, you know, and it's frequently in skincare products. It's frequently added to stabilize sunscreen ingredients, but a negative con and a side effect a problem of alcohol and skincare products is that it's very drying. This product, this particular toner does not have alcohol in it. Um, it is basically a bottle of some different oils, jojoba oil and avocado oil, for example, and castor oil. And oils in skincare is something that people are really enthusiastic about. You'll frequently see them in moisturizers. Oils really just work to soften the edges of the skin cells. They're not humectants, meaning they don't hold water into the skin, and they're not occlusive enough to prevent water loss from the skin. So they don't really do that much long-term to portend really much benefit in terms of moisturizing your skin, as they would if they were combined in moisturizers. So just putting them on your skin can kind of increase the luminosity transiently of your face, just by smoothing out some rough patches, but without other moisturizing ingredients, they're not really doing too much on their own. But the real problematic thing about the vanilla milk toner is that it contains fragrance. Fragrance plus oils on the face is a recipe for irritation. It's essentially a perfume oil that you're putting on your face. Oils by themselves can be a very unstable and can degrade, oxidize, and alongside fragrance ingredients, fragrance compounds, the rate at which that occurs is much greater and the degree to which that occurs is much, much greater. So oxidation is a real issue with products like this. And, you know, they, they add preservatives and things to lessen that. You know, it's like, this has no, this has no role. It's not helpful, this, these kinds of perfumey oils in the skin. So I don't recommend that. You know, it markets it, markets it as uh, an active preparation step. Yeah, I mean, just use, if you just use the moisturizer, you'd be fine. I mean, that, that's really what you need. You don't need a special oil to prepare the skin for the moisturizer. It's, it's really not helpful. And it's 22 bucks. Uh, that's not cheap for something that's not necessary or helpful and likely to cause problems. So I don't recommend that. Um, and then you guys know for some time now, I've said eye creams are not an essential whatsoever. And if anything, eye creams can set the stage for uh, eyelid dermatitis. I have a whole video on eyelid dermatitis and eye creams are notorious offenders. 
And rhythm, you know, and gen generally speaking, whatever moisturizer you're putting on your face should be more than fine to go around your eyes. And if it's not, then you kind of have to question what type of moisturizer you're using. The Kylie Skin Eye Cream is not a bad one per se. It actually has reasonable ingredients in it. It's $20 for uh, 17 ml, I believe. It has shea butter. Again, I mentioned that's a great ingredient. It has green tea. Green tea is a polyphenol that's been shown to be anti-inflammatory, helpful for redness, helpful for decreasing the size of pores. That's there for whatever it's worth. And it also has lactobacillus ferment filtrates in it, which can be rich in humectants. There's really nothing I can say too bad about the ingredient list. I wish Kylie had just made the face moisturizer the same way and then we'd have a good moisturizer perhaps or one that I'd be interested in trying myself. Um, maybe I'll put the eye cream all over my face uh, in one foul swoop and then it'll be over. But wipes are the other product that she has and I don't recommend makeup wipes. They, they're 10 bucks uh, and they have fragrance. The reason I don't recommend wipes, makeup wipes, is that they leave behind a residue on the skin of fragrance ingredients that combine with the broken up makeup uh, and oils on your skin. Oh, it's just this irritant milieu and around the pore opening, the the hair follicle opening where the pore is, you can get some so much irritation from that mixture of the oils and the fragrance and the makeup just sitting there and oxidizing on the skin that you can get a flare of acne, acne like rashes, or it's a set up with all these different, with all these different ingredients nudging one another uh, into chaos for allergic contact dermatitis developing. So don't recommend makeup wipes. If you use them to break up your foundation or what have you, then definitely wash them off with a gentle cleanser and definitely choose those that are at least fragrance free, which hers are not. So don't recommend her wipes. Um, and uh, I talked a little bit about makeup wipes in my Dollar, Dollar Tree video as well. And then the last product that I'll talk about, and you, you guys will be surprised, I'm not going to rag on it too, too much, is her vitamin C serum. And here's why. It's 28 bucks. And, you know, if you've been watching any number of my videos, you probably hate the fact, like many people, that I don't use a vitamin C serum. That baffles people. They don't understand why I don't use vitamin C serum. The reason I don't use vitamin C serum or really feel comfortable always promoting vitamin C serum to you or to patients is that vitamin C, topical vitamin C, while it has definitely been shown to be helpful for uh, specifically uh, limiting the degree of pigmentation that results from sun exposure and to have some beneficial properties for skin brightening as well as for strengthening some of the deeper layers of the skin. It's really honestly like even though I don't use it, I'm not saying that the science behind it is not compelling and interesting and something that we should focus more on. However, the issue with topical vitamin C is that it is incredibly unstable and oxidizes and can set up the person using it for irritation. And vitamin C in topical formulations, serums, what have you, is a cosmeceutical ingredient. It's not a prescription drug or an over-the-counter drug. So there's no oversight, there's no regulation. So companies have no, have no onus to due diligence to show efficacy or um, stability of their vitamin C. And knowing what we know about how poor, how unstable vitamin C is, it's really hard to objectively recommend one vitamin C serum over the other. But I'll just touch a little bit more on vitamin C for you guys to remind you. L-ascorbic acid is uh, water soluble and one of the most potent forms of vitamin C topically. However, because it's water soluble, it really has a challenging time penetrating the waxy, oily barrier of the skin. So getting it into the skin is really a challenge for formula, formulation and product design. I mean, manufacturers really have to get get sophisticated. And not only that, vitamin C oxidizes very, very quickly. I mean, if you've ever had vitamin C serum, you'll notice it kind of, it turns a funky orange color on exposure to air. Similar to if you leave, if you leave an apple out, it turns kind of brown, same thing is going on. It's just oxidation. And so that can happen. So they have to add things like vitamin E and ferulic acid to act as antioxidants to protect the vitamin C and lessen the degree to which that happens. And there is a lot of research on 
good ways to attempt to get vitamin C to be stable and get it into the skin. But there are no agreed upon formulations and it's not standardized. So while many dermatologists do recommend and sell to their patients vitamin C, it's not a drug that we can prescribe. It's something we can sell to people, but it's not something we would prescribe. And many dermatologists, given what I already told you about the evidence for it, feel comfortable selling it to their patients. Others don't. I was recently at a meeting where there was a panel of skin cancer experts talking about sunscreen and they specifically were talking about vitamin C and what has been shown to be helpful in terms of combating some of UV damage. And the consensus from the panel is like, yeah, it's really compelling, but because we have no, because of the limitations of stability, I'm not gonna tell my patient to go plunk down 169 bucks on a vitamin C serum from SkinCeuticals. And I feel the same way. Uh, so coming back to Kylie's, which is 28 bucks, um, and you know, I can't, like I said, like I've said in my videos, I can't tell you if Kylie's vitamin C is, is as effective as a SkinCeuticals one, maybe, or isn't. You know, there's no, there's no compar comparison studies. There are no objective studies. So somebody may tell you Kylie's worked great, and that's their, that's their subjective consumer experience. But objectively speaking, we really can't, we really can't make that conclusion. Um, and I will say another thing about hers, it contains tetrahexyl ascorbate, which is a lipid soluble form of vitamin C that is of interest to cosmeceutical manufacturers. And by lipid soluble, I mean it has a better chance of getting across that waxy lipid barrier of the skin barrier. However, there are some small studies looking at the lipid soluble forms of vitamin C and they don't really seem to get to the levels in the skin necessary to achieve to achieve efficacy. So it's debatable that they are effective and they're less well studied than L-ascorbic acid. Um, L-ascorbic acid also has to be, uh, products need to be formulated with a sufficient concentration of the vitamin C in order for it to be effective, greater than 8%. However, we do also know that products that have vitamin C greater than 20% are no more effective than lower percentages, but can be more irritating. Kylie doesn't really disclose the percentage strength of the um, of the vitamin C in her in her product, so I don't know how irritating it's going to be to people. Um, and you know, it does have ferulic acid in it. It does have vitamin E, so those are added in there to stabilize the, the vitamin C. And it also has green tea and other antioxidants. So you know, I can't honestly predict who this is going to irritate and who it's not, but I guarantee. Many of you will get be irritated by it, and some of you will find it effective. Uh, but you know, I, I have no I have no objective science to back that up as far as comparing Kylie versus SkinCeuticals versus any other vitamin C out there. But Kylie did nicely leave out any fragrancy essential oils to muddy the irritation water, so I will point out that merit. That being said, uh, the brand Dermatology, you guys know I'm a huge fan of their sunscreens, D-R-M-T-L-G-Y. They have a vitamin C serum that is 69 bucks uh, and has the same ingredients as the SkinCeuticals one. They claim that it is the exact same formulation. Uh, so, you know, that's something if you, if you want to play around with vitamin C serums, I might suggest that one, but I have no, I have no way, honestly, of knowing if that one's good, better, best, better than SkinCeuticals, less good than SkinCeuticals, or if Kylie is winning the vitamin C game. Who knows if and how much R&D went into, went into her vitamin C serum as opposed to the others. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, L'Oreal has a large budget for R&D of, of this, and it's something they've been working on for many, many years, and they put a lot of effort into. Um, I don't know that I can say that about Kylie skin, um, but yeah, uh, kind of the same thing with a drunk elephant vitamin C, you know, I, I really can't, I can never say for sure one of these brands versus the other, and you guys that like it, you like it, um, and you know, I'm not going to sway you from that, but it can, it can still cause irritation, but yes, there is some science to back it up, I just don't feel comfortable being able to recommend one brand over the other for reasons that hopefully I clarify to you guys in this video. But yeah, that's what I said about Kylie skin. You know, honestly, I think when it comes to these skincare brands, thousands of brands are being launched every single day. It's really hard to keep up with all of them. And it's kind of a little grotesque at times that so many are coming out. 
I do think that when celebrities come out with a skincare line, they're under some sort of unusual lens. And as consumers, I think it's important for you to take a step back and realize that these people are just kind of the face of the brand. They really don't have much behind the R&D or the actual efficacy, stability, safety of the products. Um, they just want to make money because this is a lucrative industry and I can't really fault them, you know, for wanting, wanting to have a skincare brand because it is a lucrative industry. Eye creams alone are hot sellers. Even Paula's Choice, you'll, I'm getting a little tangential here, but even Paula, Paula's Choice, Paula, Paula's Choice, uh, you know, she received a lot of flack for coming out with an eye cream after saying eye creams weren't necessary. But I believe in an interview she gave, she said, I, I caved because people kept demanding an eye cream. Uh, so I caved and came out with an eye cream. And, you know, that, that's the nature of the beast. So try and keep that in your mind when all of these are coming out that, it's just, it's just a business, you guys. It's just a business. And honestly, keep it simple. Keep it minimal. Moisturizer, sunscreen, face wash. That's really all you need. You don't need all this other stuff. And if anything, it can set you up for irritation for problems down the road. You know, I like skincare products. I try out a lot of fun stuff. But, you know, the true, the true important stuff is really just keeping it simple and trying to minimize all this fragrance and jazzy ingredients. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.